Alyssa Royce, and welcome to Around Addison. On today's episode, we'll take a look around the district and introduce you to some interesting people and programs that have a daily impact on our student lives. To get us started, let's toss it over to my co-host, Sia Rugdi at Herbert Hoover Middle School. Thank you, Alyssa. In today's technology-filled lifestyle, your smartphone and the multiple apps have taken over nearly every aspect of your life. In fact, an article posted on Entrepreneur.com states that the mobile app development market will be worth nearly $77 billion by 2017. Well, some developers at TCS Consulting Services decided to jump on this growing trend and introduce mobile app design to a group of students at Woodrow Wilson Middle School. During a two-day program, groups of students were instructed to develop, design, and create a smartphone app that assists the user in the area of health and fitness. The resulting products were very interesting and clearly showed how creative and ambitious the students of the Edison Public Schools are. So one per table. I'll also bring around hotspots and tablets for you, so don't worry about that. Um, two. Once we get closer to time, maybe right after lunch, I'm going to start pulling teams. We're going to go in that little corner over there, and you're going to do a kind of like a quick like dry run of your presentation so I can work with you before you stand up in front of judges. So, any questions before I let you go? It's about 10 o'clock. It's, it's almost 10. So you're going to have about two solid hours at least of hard work ahead of you. So we're gonna come around and hand you some tablets and some tablets. They want to be empowered, because they see all of this TV and they're just like, I wanna be that person. I wanna be able to do what I want to do. And how do you engage them at that level? while still educating them. Project-based learning like, is something that's, you know, buzzword in education now is get you engaged, get you in the content as opposed to have somebody like passively talking at you on a PowerPoint all the time. Yeah. We want the kids to understand that this, what they're doing now, will help them in the future. We have students come in for two to three days and understand how to design apps and a bit of coding on how to prototype that app. But the focus of that thing is to design an app from the beginning. So why do you want to build this app? The why behind their problems. So the theme for this year, and Hillary can speak about that, is 2016, the theme is health and fitness. Health and fitness and youth is such an important thing because a, we sponsor the marathon, so health is important to us anyway, and B, there's kind of an epidemic in children of obesity, whether it's because they're sedentary, they're too busy with homework, or they're playing video games. We wanted to bring it back to them and put kids in the mindset of how would you encourage your peers to be more healthy or encourage yourself to be more healthy. They're, they can empathize with their products so they can build a better design, which is all part of the design process. They need to understand what they build before they build it. So are you guys all volunteers? Yes. Yeah, we are all volunteers, volunteers. today. Uh, and um, how do, uh, do you think that um, uh, Go IT will help them in the future, choosing their career? Absolutely, I think that's the idea. I think it's to stimulate the process, is to give them tools, to give them uh, channels of opportunity. It is also uh, enabling them to build some credentials. Uh, let's say the kids are starting today and they are building and experimenting with different apps or different uh, other technology initiatives. So that's gonna uh, help them build their credentials. And I think along with the app, it's the stimulation of the thought process which is allowing you to think differently, which is allowing you to think uh, from the customer's perspective and empathize. It is a chance that TCS gives bring the people united and let's give them a chance to bring their own ideas and give some technical advisors to how to develop that. So they can take it up for the future also. So they will just utilize this opportunity and it will give them a better opportunity to develop very beautiful apps going forward. Yesterday they came in, they understood a bit about coding, a bit about why design is important and why you should first start with a problem rather than technology. So you can't just come in and code something. No, you need to understand a problem and then be like, well, this is our problem. These are the technological solutions to our problem. And now, as you can see right now, they're designing 
those apps and how the app flows. Working in technology doesn't necessarily mean you're a coder. So we have our business analysts, which is where the business model canvas comes in because we want them to build a business around their idea. There's design because you need to design something and then there's the actual coding. So all three are really important and students will learn what they're really good at as this process goes on. Some will really take the reins and be like, I want to build the thing, I want to code the thing. Some people like drawing and art. So a lot of different skills can be utilized in technology, which is something else that's really special about this program because we want to teach them that it's not just the hard coding that goes into this process and that multiple skills can be attributed to this growing. Social networking to promote fitness and motivate teens and adults to become healthy. When they present, we want them to think about, you know, not just how to hook the, the, the judges and listen to you, but also the ask. You know, what are you asking from them? What, you know, what is your app? How, are you, how is your app going to function? And in a lot of schools that we go to, they don't understand that they're not just the consumers. They, they could be the producers. So we really want to empower students to know that no matter what age, with the skills that we're starting to help them create here, that they can be the producers too. They're just as capable as anybody else. Like you said, it's free. We're here. You just have to be able to think through the right methods. And it's for everybody. It's not just for the, the geniuses. Yeah, and that's, and that's the focus. It's to teach them methods that will help them throughout their life, not just in computer science, but in any field. Each year, Martin Luther King Elementary School invites a successful children's author to visit with the students. This year, author Jerry Pelota, creator of 75 titles, entertained the students with his unique view of animals, bugs, and life in general. Kids, instead of writing another book, some guys, some authors invent creatures. So see? So, instead, instead of inviting... Instead of inventing Spider-Man, I am Cougar Man. I got married, I had four kids under six years old, and I was reading to them. My wife made me read to my kids, and when I was reading to them, I just thought, hey, I could do this. I had four kids. When they were little, I wrote books to them. But in my head, I was thinking of the ocean. So I'm reading to my kids. A for apple, B for ball, C for cat. But in my head, I'm thinking of the ocean. People say, oh, you didn't like those books you were reading. It's not true. I really liked the books I was reading. I thought they were really cute. I just thought, hey, I could do this. So I started writing books. And one of my books sold a million copies. And then I thought, well, I could do this for a job. So that's what happened. I've been biking across the country, me and two other 16-year-old guys. We started five years ago. We did two weeks every summer. So I'm 100 miles from the Atlantic Ocean right now. But see this? Here's my bike. I drove around New Jersey, there's millions of people, there's factories, there's houses. Look at this, it was mostly farmers. I came to the town Taylor, guess what? I looked for Taylor Swift. She didn't live there. That's all sunflowers, you guys. At one point, there were 10 miles, uh, for 10 miles, there were sunflowers. So look at this, that's what it was like for 10 miles. Kids, you know when you go into the store and you buy sunflower seeds? That's where they come from. No. See all the sunflowers? I read a lot. I go to museums. You know, I browse libraries and bookstores and I skip book ideas. I talk to a lot of kids. I've been to 4,000 schools. Kids yell ideas at me all the time. Kids, you know what I thought of one day? L for little green crab. J for Jonah crab. G for gross crab. B for blue crab. D for decorated crab. Hey kids, I need your help. Should this be the cover? Crab alphabet book. Or should this be the cover? Wicked cool crab alphabet book. Yeah. <laughs> I call the ocean alphabet. I put a goosefish in the book. Hey kids, want to see a real goosefish? Yeah. It's a real goosefish. All my author friends, whether they're tall, skinny, white, black, you know, fat, old, young, all my author friends are real big readers. So everyone I know that's a famous author are big readers, you know. I myself try to read a book every week. Read. Read my books. <laughs> Teachers, you know what else I did? I put eyeball idioms, eye idioms in the book. Kids, want to see an idiom? Yeah. 
He says, keep your eye on the ball. That doesn't mean take a ball and stick it in your face. It means pay attention. I told her to drop out the book, I caught a lobster. See the cage? See the lobster right now? Hey kids, guess what a lobster did to me? He did it by me, he did it pinch me. You know what he did? I can't believe what he did. He stole my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. <laughs>《Other Stories and Announcements Happening Around Edison》Woodbrook Elementary School recently held its annual International Expo at Woodrow Wilson Middle School. Students displayed their knowledge of distant lands and cultures through massive wall displays and entertaining songs for those in attendance. Hello, bonjour, buenos dias. Good day, guten tag, konnichiwa. official park exam were released in January, and Edison students proudly scored at the top amongst Middlesex County school districts. The poster results reflected a high percentage of students in Edison, recording level 5 or exceeding expectations grading. The Engage Edison Parent Tech Conference was held in mid-February at Edison High School. The focus was on assistance for K-8 to parents, helping them understand the role of technology in our schools and forging a stronger home to school connection. The Engage Edison Parent Tech Conference was held in mid-February at Edison High School. The focus was on assistance for K-8 to parents, helping them understand the role of technology in our schools and forging a stronger home to school connection. I do want to welcome you this morning to our Edison Engage 2016. We're immersed in a revolution of information, changing our industries, changing the ways that we look at careers and changing the ways that we prepare kids. And Edison is doing that here, and here's how. Most of today is hopefully a learning experience for you to understand that what we're doing in our schools is not necessarily just about technology. Most importantly, it's about changing and moving forward the way our students learn and the way our educators teach in the classroom. What does it mean to connect minds like we had never been able to do before. If you look throughout history, whether that's ancient Greece, or the coffee houses of London, or Silicon Valley today, minds come together and share ideas, and great things come out of that. Right now, we're seeing things happen at a rate that has never been seen before. You know, we are really trying to make sure um, that our district is ready and preparing your children, our students, for the future, and what that future will bring. By 2020, there's going to be 34 billion devices connected to the internet. How do we get kids ready for that? What do we do? It starts here. It starts in your elementary schools with the effort that they're doing from all the technology there to the one-to-one -one programs at the middle school and the upcoming one-to-one -one programs at the high school. This district is ready and getting your children ready for what that world looks like and those skills that they'll need to be successful in this space. So yes, we can be concerned, and justifiably so, about social pieces, balancing tech with traditional learning, and all those things that Edison is doing so well, but we have to realize that fear has never innovated anything. 
and has never changed anything in our world. So driving forward in this space of this tech technical revolution and preparing kids for what their future will look like, not the world that we know right now, is critical. We're preparing kids for a world that we don't know what it looks like, that jobs that aren't created yet, and it's great to talk about that. It's another thing to see it in numbers, that two-thirds of the jobs that kindergartens will have available to them don't exist yet. So how do you address that? In a district this size, how do you look at that and how do you build an education system that prepares kids for the unknown? Never staying static, never staying stagnant in a process, but always looking at improvement as the goal. I think it's probably the most important for us and for me is for you to see the unbelievable, amazing educators we have in this district. What they're doing on a daily basis, what they're preparing your children for, and what they do every day is truly amazing. You are very fortunate, and I can't say this enough, to be in one of the best school districts, not only in New Jersey, but in the United States and in some cases in the world. Candlelight Vigil hosted by Edison High School on January 13, 2016 was one night to remember. The idea was born two months earlier when four students wanted to bring awareness to the worldwide terrorist attacks that occurred in 2015, specifically the attacks on innocent civilians in Paris. The idea was shared between several clubs, including the French Club, the Art Club, and the Echo Club. Each club played a role in making this event possible. The lobby was decorated with posters and quotes about the attacks, which surrounded the candlelight display. Soulful music being played by a quartet of musicians set a mood of solemn remembrance. The French club designed posters with quotes by famous people on the subject of nonviolence. In addition, the art club displayed beautiful images about the Paris attacks, world peace, hope, and harmony. Several candles were laid out in a quiet display. Those attending could purchase a candle for one dollar, with the proceeds going to the Paris Red Cross. Later, the attendees were called for a presentation in the auditorium. Tonight we stand united as one. One school, one city, one state, one nation, one world denouncing violence and asserting peace. The president of the Moon and Stars Club began by speaking passionately about how terrorism shouldn't be blamed on any religion, especially Islam. Terrorism, or any sort of violence whatsoever, has no affiliation at all with any religion, be that Islam, Christianity, atheism, Buddhism, you name it. It doesn't matter what your belief system is, no act of violence or terrorism can be affiliated with a religion, but it can only be affiliated with a person's own personal beliefs and them acting out of their own accord. That's base number one. This speech was followed by a graceful ballet to Le Mont Estone by Celine Dion, referring to the sorrow felt from the Paris attacks. The remainder of the evening featured poetry and literature written by the Echo Club. I am once went to school excited to learn, and now I'm scared that our lockdown drills will no longer be drills, but us hiding from the villains, and I want to run from the hills. When did this get so bad? Breathe in, breathe out. What are we supposed to do now? Their touching works expressed the waves of emotions in times of strife and discord, and highlighted the overall theme to appreciate life the way it is and finding happy moments in sad so times. Selfish. Hatred will always inflict more hatred unless you are willing to overlook the pain brought onto you. So I sink to the floor and sob my forgiveness into the echoing silence. 
The evening was summarized by Mr. Ross, principal of Edison High School, who ended the presentation on a somber note by saying, in darkness, people are going to follow the light. That's all for today's show. We'll be back soon with a new episode. But until then, thanks for watching, and remember to keep an eye out for what's going on around Edison.